out, and uh, we're, we're glad he's home. I want to speak to us today, and I'm, I'm going to try to hurry this along, so I don't want it to be quite like a drive-by, but kind of like a drive-by. So uh, if you will open your Bibles with me to Mark 6, I want to talk to you today about something that I believe is one of the most powerful attributes of the kingdom. One of the most powerful attributes of the kingdom. I want to talk to you about honor. Honor unlocks the gift. I'm going to say that again. Honor unlocks the gift. And I want you to really hear this today because I believe that God is speaking to us in this season because I believe that there is much to be opened to this house. But I'm going to tell you, uh, where God works and where God shows up is in places where honor and generosity and kindness and things like that prevail. God shows up and works strongly in order. If you look, if you read the stories, man, how many of you really enjoying the reading of the word right now? It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And I've listened to these stories, heard them all my life. And every time I read them, I get something fresh. Every time I turn to one, it's something so intriguing. And I listen to the story and I'm just so moved by the stories uh, in the word of God. But if you look at the, the building of Solomon's temple, when he got everything in place, the Bible says that when he got everything in place, order was brought to the house. Order was brought to the house that when the people gathered and Solomon prayed that the glory of the Lord fell so intensely that the ministers could not even stand to minister. I don't know about y'all, but I want to I wanna be in a house of honor. I want to be in a house of integrity. I want to be in a house of character. I want to be in a house of kindness. I want people to feel welcome here. I don't want them to just feel welcome. I want them to feel like they can step in and be a part. We don't have all the ushers we need. We don't have all the porters and greeters we need. We want you to feel like you can be a part of what Elizabeth Barreto was talking about right here. We want you to feel like you can enter in and be involved in Joseph's storehouse like the meals we're talking about. And thank God for the meals. They've been over there almost every day uh, helping and serving, and so many have. And uh, it, it's, it's incredible to just watch what God is doing, how he's using our people uh, George and Brenda, you know, they're just so quiet and they sit up here and nobody really kind of notices. But I'm going to tell you, that's two of the hardest working people in this house right here. They get up early in the morning. They go to they go to H-E-B at 6 o'clock. We're over uh, unlocking the doors for them at the Joseph Storehouse so they can get in because they've already gone and picked up stuff for us. And they work every day. They'll stay there all day long and stock shelves and do all kinds of things. And I just tell you, I want to be around people like that. I want to be around people who give. I said, I want to be around people who give. I want to be around, I don't like stingy people. Come on, y'all. want to be around people who know what it means to honor one another. Go with me to Mark 6. The Bible says in the first verse, and I'm reading NASB, the 2020 edition. Jesus went out from there and came into his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, Where did this man learn these things? And what is this wisdom that has been given to him? And such miracles as these performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are his sisters not here with us? And they took 
offense at him. And Jesus said, a prophet is not dishonored except in his own hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. Verse 5, and he could not do any miracles there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And he was going around the villages teaching. Look at Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 57. I know I didn't give you all a bunch of scriptures in the back back there, but I thank you for flowing with me today. I know you can, and I know you will. Matthew 13, verse 57. It, the scripture says, And they took offense at him. Because Jesus said to them, a prophet is not dishonored except in his hometown and his own household. And he did not do many miracles because of their unbelief. Jesus said, you dishonor me. And then he said he couldn't do miracles because of their unbelief. Check it out. Jesus said, you dishonor me and I can't do any miracles here because of your unbelief. Dishonor and unbelief. I'll say that one more time because I want you to catch that. When you dishonor, you lock up the gift that is in the other person. When you honor, you access the gift that is in the other person. Everybody say honor. Honor, honor is high respect or great esteem. And I, I, I want to help you with this, and I want you to pay attention because honor is not one way. Honor is not just one way. It goes both ways. I want you to hear this today. Honor is a high respect or great esteem, the ability to see others with the humbleness of great respect. Honor is literally the culture of the kingdom. In fact, I'm going to tell you that honor is actually the currency of the kingdom. It is the key that unlocks gifts, it unlocks blessings that are just out of your grasp. Honor, hear this, is not given because someone is honorable, because that's always subjective. <laughs> Honor is given because that is how I live my life. It becomes my standard to honor you, to prefer you before me. It is my standard to open the door for my brother and let my brother go first. It is my honor, it is my standard to let you get your plate filled before I fill mine. It is my standard. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying, I don't think. It is my standard to bring you a cup of water before I drink. We have to understand that honor is not given because someone is honorable. Honor has nothing to do with the other person. It has everything to do with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Honor is given because that's our personal standard. You know, in the era where I grew up, when I grew up, in the, that day, back then, not 100 years ago, but almost, <clears throat> in that day, honor was taught by our parents. It was something we learned at home. One of the reasons it was easy to grasp is because we watched our parents honor and respect each other. I watched my mother honor my father. 
And I watched my father honor my mother. And when they told us to honor, it was easy to do because we had already seen the example. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And we watched how they respected our leaders. Even if they did not personally perhaps like the person, you would never know it. Because they respected the office so much that they refused to talk about the person. Oh, y'all not helping me right there. See, you grow up knowing to respect the office because all power is given by God. So we consider our honor to be honoring the Lord when we honor the office. Oh, y'all don't miss that. Because if you dishonor the office, what if you are dishonoring God? Come on, y'all. Romans 13, every person is subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. This is scripture, y'all. This is scripture, y'all. I'm not preaching for my own benefit. I need you to hear this. This is scripture. Every person is subject to be the governing to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they have they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. So Paul is showing us that if we defy leadership, we're actually defying God. If we resist leadership, if we resist authority, we're actually resisting God. You go back and read that whole chapter because it says it, in, in the chapter 13, it talks about the idea, if you're not doing anything bad, you don't ever have to fear authority. It's just when you're doing bad things that you have to fear authority. Now, I know that we got all kinds of stuff going on, and we, and we talk about, oh, but there's bad police officers, there's bad doctors, and there's bad this, and there's bad. Yeah, there's bad in, in a little bit of every people group, but that doesn't make this scripture untrue. My, my, my. That's going to be another lesson, huh? So John 4, go with me to John 4. I want you to understand something. I'm going to try to do this very quickly. Somebody say every person is subject to the governing authorities. Yeah, it's, it's important that we understand that and that we teach that and we exemplify that because we're in a society of dishonor today. Y'all not going to help me right there, I can tell you. Chapter 4 of John, you know the story. There was a woman of Samaria who came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. So the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, though you are a Jew, are asking me for a drink, though I am a Samaritan woman. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus replied to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. So the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw water. So he said to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said to him, I have no husband. 
And Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I have no husband. For you've had five husbands. And the one whom you have is not your husband. This which you have said is true. And the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. I want you to notice this. I want you to notice this. The Bible says in Matthew, the 10th chapter, that the one who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. The one who receives a righteous person in the name of a righteous person shall receive a righteous person's reward. I want you to hear this again, and I want you to pay attention to it. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, then you access the gift that is in the prophet. You will receive a prophet's reward. What is the prophet's reward? The prophet's reward is that he will prophesy to you. He will speak a word over your life. There's a gift that is upon him. Notice, I want you to understand this. Notice that the scripture doesn't put the responsibility on the prophet in the equation. The responsibility is on how you perceive the prophet. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If you receive the prophet in the name of a prophet, if you honor the prophet as a prophet, then your honor can unlock the gift of the prophet and the prophet's gift will add blessing and dimension to your life. Somebody say, I'm about to unlock some things in my life. Yeah, I'm about to unlock some things in my life. How am I going to unlock some things in my life? Because I'm going to learn how to honor the way the Lord wants me to honor. And as I honor, I'm going to unlock all kinds of things that are around me. There are gifts, there are blessings, and there are revelations that belong to you. Somebody say, I have blessings that I have not yet experienced. Come on, say it. I have revelations that I have not yet experienced. I'm about to release them by the way I live in a culture of honor. I'm about to release some stuff from my life. I want you to understand this. As long as you have no respect, as long as you have no belief or no honor towards the person who can unlock the blessings, you will never have those blessings. So if you want to tell me I don't believe in prophecy, don't worry about it. You'll never get a prophecy. I don't believe God works through prophets. Fine. Don't believe it. And you won't ever have to experience it. But if you're telling me, I understand that God still works in the prophets today. And the prophet's life, the role of an Old Testament prophet is different from the role of a New Testament prophet. And you got to understand that God is not up here trying to kill and destroy you. God is trying to add dimension to you. He is blessing you through the voice of the prophet. And if you can receive a man of God as a prophet, guess what? You get the prophet's reward. I want you to understand this. If, if you honor the prophet, you get to unlock things, the gifts and the blessings. But as long as you have no respect, as long as you have no belief, as long as you have no honor towards a person who can unlock blessings, you'll never experience them. Jesus could not do many miracles because of their disbelief. We know him. That's, that's Mary's boy. 
And that, this kid used to work in the carpenter shop right down the street. And they scoffed at him and mocked at him, even though he performed some miracles in their midst. Where did he learn all that? That's just, that's just Mary's baby. That's just that's Joseph's son. That's, that's that guy named Jesus, right? He was always a little strange like that, always a little off. I don't know. I don't really believe any of this. And if you don't believe it, guess what? You shut the gift down. I'm gonna help. I, want you to, I want you to get this. You shut the gift down. So let's look at this woman in John 4. I didn't forget about her. Jesus had come to the town of Samaria, and his disciples had gone away to buy food. And he's right near a well, and a Samaritan woman comes to draw water. Y'all doing okay? All right. Is this helping anybody? So he asks her for a drink of water. Now her response is powerfully important. You got to catch this. She said, she said, when he asked for a drink, how is it that you, though you are a Jew, are asking me for a drink, though I am a Samaritan? So watch how Jesus responds to her. If you knew the gift of God, and who it is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. I want you to notice a couple of things. I, I want you to see this. She correctly identifies him as a Jew, and he ignores it. <laughs> he ignores that piece of information and said, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is saying to you. In other words, the way she identified him, Jesus basically says, that's unimportant. You picked up on the fact that I'm a Jew, but that don't make a hill of beans in what's about to happen right here. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's not the piece that you need to be understanding or recognizing. He is saying you are recognizing the wrong things about me. It has skewed your perception, watch this, because of the culture you live in. Oh, y'all. It has skewed your perception because of a culture that you live in. You're a Samaritan woman, and Samaritans were actually half Jew. But because they were half Jew, they were not considered somebody to be associated with by a Jew. And that culture had dictated that to her and spoken that to her so long that when Jesus shows up at the well, that's all she could see. Her culture had watered down her ability to discern. Her culture had, y'all not, boy, it's quiet in here, it's quiet in here. Her culture had messed her up so bad that she couldn't get past the fact that you're a Jew asking me, a Samaritan, for water. And I imagine that Jesus probably just kind of smiled to himself and kind of possibly even laughed. <laughs> if you knew the gift of God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't miss it. If you knew the gift of God. Hold up, hold up, hold up. If you knew the gift of God. The gift of God bypasses the vessel. You may not like me. 
But if you knew the gift of God, I may not fit in your paradigm of a preacher, but if you knew the gift of God, if you knew what God could do in a crazy little white boy all the way from East Texas that never thought I'd be out of East Texas and God sent me all over the world. If you knew the gift of God, Ah, uh, y'all, he said, in other words, Jesus tells her, the stuff you're looking at is not the important stuff. Can I tell you something? In the kingdom, we don't serve people. We serve God. You know why? Because... If you serve people, you'll quit. As soon as you find a little chink in their armor, as soon as they make a little mistake, as soon as they do something you don't like or something you don't think they ought to do, somebody told me they left the church because uh, somebody had left the church because the last ordination service they didn't believe some of the people that were being ordained should be ordained. And I'm like, well, who made them God? As soon as you see, oh, y'all got real quiet there. As soon as you see something wrong with somebody, oh, you know what that lets me know? You weren't here to serve God. You were here to serve people. Are you hearing me today? You weren't here to serve God. You were here to serve people. And as long as you serve people, you'll always be disappointed. You'll always be disappointed because ain't nobody that good. Come on, y'all. Ain't nobody that good. So I can bypass the little mistakes that I make. I can bypass the little stumblings that you make. I can bypass the little stuff that you might say. Why? Because I'm not serving you. I'm serving God. I am serving God. I am serving God. I'm doing what I do for God. I don't do it for your approval. I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here for you to like me. I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm here because God sent me here and I serve God and refuse to be bought by people. Oh! Oh! Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I refuse to be bought out by people. I refuse to follow crazy folk around. I refuse to follow people that get upset with everything and want to fuss and want to leave the church over the color of the wall paint. I refuse. What's this? You got to understand that if your everyday culture is skewed, y'all hear me? If your everyday culture is skewed, then your spirituality is skewed. I'll say that one more time. If your everyday culture what you listen to every day, what feeds you every day, what speaks into your life every day, if that is skewed, then your spirituality gets skewed. If your everyday culture tells you one thing about certain people, when you get to church, that don't change. Oh, y'all not here. <laughs> this is why Paul said, in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, do not be mismatched with unbelievers. 
For what do righteousness and lawlessness share together? Or what does light have in common with darkness? Or what does harmony, what harmony does Christ have with Belial or Satan? Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? Or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from under their midst, from among their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean and I will welcome you and I'll be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. You know what he's telling us? You got to honor my word if you want the anointing that I've got for your life. You got to honor what I'm telling you if you want to walk in what I'm about to give you. I want to release something great on you, but I got to find somebody who is willing to walk in my word and shut their mouth when the gossiping starts and shut their mouth when somebody tries to poison you over leadership in a house. I need to hear some people in here today that know that God is doing something great in this moment and the culture of honor needs to come back in the house. I need somebody to shout yes if you believe it. Shout yes. You got to understand it. You can be seated just for a minute. I'm almost done. He says, don't be mismatched. Y'all hear this. With unbelievers. Somebody say unbeliever. In order to be an unbeliever, believer you had to first be a believer you had to have the opportunity to believe you had to have the opportunity to experience truth you can't just be an unbeliever when you've never heard anything to believe Are y'all hearing me? So he said, don't be mismatched with unbelievers. Can I tell you something? Can I be real plain today? Because I'm here to put my foot on the devil's neck and tell him not another day, not another moment. We're done playing games around here. We're done playing games. I've been real nice, and I've let people run over me. I've let people talk about me. I've let people do all kinds of things, and I welcome them back every time and give them another opportunity and another opportunity and another opportunity. But I'm feeling the spirit of Maya Angelou about right now, and it says when she said, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Just, just know who they are. When they act a certain way, go ahead and trust that. They're showing you who, y'all don't hear me. They, they're showing you who they are. I don't know why we choose to hang on people who... Can I be real plain? Can I be real plain? I don't know why you would want to come to this house or any other house and hang on to people who are talking about that house and won't come to church here and they poison your spirit and it shows up on you. You come in here and you look like you're sick in your face and I'm trying to tell you, God is saying, come out from under their midst, come out from them and be separate because I have appointed you for such a time as this, but you're not gonna get it until you learn the spirit of honor in the house. I need you to know it. I need you to know it. I'm not trying to play games. Paul, listen, you get jaded by what you constantly listen to. You can't get sweet water and bitter water out of the same fountain. You cannot drink Paul said this, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. So watch what does Jesus do in this moment. I'm wrapping it up now, y'all. Hang with me. Everybody good? Everybody good? Y'all okay? All right. He says, 
you have perceived the wrong thing about me. So let me change your perception. Watch what he does. He said, she said, sir, you don't have a bucket. The well's deep. Where are you going to get this living water? You're not greater than Father Jacob. Are you who gave, made this well and drank of it himself, his sons and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said, everyone who drinks this water is going to be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into eternal life. And the woman said, sir, give me this water so that I'll not be thirsty nor have to come all the way here to draw water. She's still missing it. She's thinking he's talking about natural water. And he said to her, let me help you, sweetie. Go call your husband. The woman said, uh, I ain't got no husband. He said, yeah, that's true. You don't have one because this dude you're living with is not your husband. You've had five husbands. And the one whom you have now is not your husband. This which you have said is true. And the woman said to him, sir? I perceive all of a sudden it wasn't a Jew. <laughs> all of a sudden he's, he's not somebody just asking for a drink of water from a Samaritan woman. All of a sudden she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Watch this. Her perception changed. Watch this. Jesus didn't change. Jesus didn't change. But he, her perception of him changed. And when her perception of him changed, guess what? She unlocked. Oh, y'all don't hear me. She unlocked the gift that he had for her. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now from that city, many of the Samaritans believe in him because of the word that the woman who testified, he told me all the things I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them. And he said, he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know the own one, that this one truly is the savior of the world. In other words, their perception changed by her testimony and by what Jesus did in front of them. If she had not told them, they would have probably seen him as a Jew too. Are y'all hearing me? Now, can I take it just a step further for one minute? We live in a world of dishonor. Our culture has made a mockery of authority. Our political system is in such disarray because of a lack of honor. There was a day when the political figures may disagree on many things, but yet they work together, Democrats and Republicans. Right now, you can't see that anywhere you look on any level. These last years have been a mockery of everything and everyone. Democrats and, and uh, Republicans are trying their best to destroy one another. Leaders are mocked and made fun of. Comedians and night shows are done away with if they're not mocking and belittling other people. We live in a culture where we have lost honor for everything from civil servants to our great military. And we have in the church tried to save honor for the pulpit only. But the true wine is found in the cluster, not in the single grape. I got to help the real wine is found when everybody, oh, y'all don't hear me, when it's not just a one-way street, when it's not just one-way thing, but when we really begin to recognize that, you know what, Joyce Wallace walks in on a powerful anointing. Marquetta Dawson has a very powerful gift of praying for you and believing for you. You look around and you see the gift. Jackie Collins has a very powerful anointing on her life. And you got to look around and see the ones around you and you recognize because when I recognize it in you, guess what? If you got something I need, 
because of my honor, I have unlocked that access and I get to access what you have. And guess what? The wine is found in the cluster, not in the single grape. So I wish you would look at somebody and say, you got an anointing on you that I need access to. So I want to unlock it today and just tell you, I honor you. Come on, stand on your feet everywhere. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, there's a gift in you. There's a blessing in you that belongs to me. And today, I unlock my access to it. Oh, yeah. Today, I unlock the access to it. I want to receive what you got. I don't want to be in a clique. I don't want to be in a group. I don't want to be in a little small bunch of people. I need access to everybody in here. I don't need just three people. I need a bunch of people. Somebody say, I receive. I receive. Come on. Say it. I receive the anointing that is in your life. I receive the gift that you walk in. I receive the gift that you carry in your life because I respect and I honor you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, I respect and honor you. Come on, clap your hands real good. Hallelujah. Stay on your feet just for a minute. If you've got your cup, I want you to get those ready. We're about to do baptism. Any baby dedications? We had nobody registered for baby dedication, but if you got a baby you want to dedicate, I receive and honor you. In that moment. Hallelujah. Just help anybody today? Let me tell you something. I'm not mad at anybody that left. I'm not mad at anybody that's not here. Not everybody that's going to come here is going to stay here. But when they leave here in bitterness and you hang on to them, you got quiet, boy. When you hang on to that and you converse with that and you allow that to feed you, guess what? You get jaded. You get jaded. You come in looking at me sideways. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You come in looking at my wife sideways. Who does she think she is? All brand new. I know how you think. I'm just telling you, that's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. God has brought us gifts in here, and yet we can't accept each other as a gift because we're too busy trying to find fault with one another. Stop worrying about everybody's faults. Stop getting caught up in everybody's faults. Some of you should be at a different level in this house right now. But I can't do it because of where you are right now. Are y'all hearing me? Don't get this whole thing twisted. <laughs> don't get it twisted. You don't get honor if you don't give honor. It's real simple. When you come in showing disrespect, I can't turn the mic over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're going to be hateful to other people in the house, I can't pass the mic to you and say, you just get up and say whatever's on your heart. Because I don't trust what's on your heart. Does that make sense to anybody? You have to have the spirit of honor in your life toward others 
And as you honor others, and listen, if you got to tell me every time you see me that you honor me, you don't honor me. You're protesting too much. It's not shown in your words. It's shown in your actions. And when words and actions don't match, that's when things start being revealed. Come on, are y'all hearing this? I'm going to tell you, all those of you looking for relationship, I don't know why I'm supposed to say this, but I feel like there's some ladies in here today that might even be involved in a relationship with some guy, and for some reason, his words and his action confuse you. I'm trying to tell you, pay attention, because what he does is more important than what he says. If he tells you one thing and acts another way, then you need to get rid of him or step way back. Because I'm going to tell you more than likely, it's not going to change. It's only going to get worse. I'm going to tell you something. I want to tell you something. While they date you, they're trying to win you. But once they marry you, they think they've got you. <laughs> well, I don't know who this is for, but I'm trying to help somebody. They think they've got you. And then all the stuff they wanted to do when you were dating that you only saw in small windows and small glimpses and small, that's going to explode in your house. They don't plant the crazy flag until you say, I do. truth and the same thing that goes on in relationships like that goes on in relationships just like this too I can't talk about you out of one side of my mouth and love on you out the other side eventually my heart is going to explode and overflow and you'll really see what I am So, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean today. Bring us back to a culture of honor like we have never known before, God. Show us who we really are in you. And let us honor you, God, first and foremost in everything we do. We honor your leadership. We honor those who are set in our lives. We honor our friends. We honor our family, God. Hallelujah. Let me just say this. Let me say this. I need to say this for somebody. If you don't honor your wife, she is going to constantly be hurting. You've got to stop with the negativity. You've got to stop tearing her down. You've got to stop ignoring her needs. And you have to pay attention to her like the day you tried to woo her. Ooh, boy, that's a word for somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost while I'm saying that. Adore your wife. Dote on her. Love on her. Don't set your children in between you and her. Y'all hear this. Don't set your children in between you and your wife. Mommies, don't play your daddies, the husband, with the little girls of the family. Y'all be honest to one another and honor one another. Guess what? When you honor somebody, you make concessions. Guess what? You change sometimes. Guess what? When you honor, not everything is your way. Mm. Not everything is your way when you honor.
So, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Would you lift that cup up high before the Lord? Father, we receive this. Take your bread, too. I'm about to do it backwards. I want to get us clean. <laughs> Take your bread and the cup and hold them both up. God, I want this all over my life in every way. God, as I place my arm even around my wife, I covet the blood of Jesus in our relationship. The bread, the flesh of Jesus, we receive you today. And we thank you. You may receive the bread. Thank you for the blood. And thank you that it washes us clean. In Jesus' name, you may receive. Amen. You may be seated just for two minutes. Three people are getting baptized. I want you to watch it right here on the screen right behind me. Brother Carl, if you got your mic on, Elder Carl. Now it's on. Can you hear me now? I got you now. <laughs> Praise God. We have Mr. Ambrose Coleman here who wants to get baptized right now. Come on, Ambrose. Step in that water, sir. Yes. Let's get in the water. in that water. Don't dive, just step. Hallelujah. Perfect. And just sit straight down. Now you sit straight down. And Perfect. These gentlemen are going to help you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for Ambrose. We thank you for his life and his commitment to you. And I pray, God, that right now as we baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that his life change from this moment forward and he walks in total victory before you. In Jesus' name, baptize him now. Yes. Come on, somebody give God praise. Yeah. These are Sister Frances Brown's grandbabies that are coming. I'm sorry, Emma Francis. Navon, come on up. Navon. Emma Francis does a lot of our decoration around here. She volunteers around here. She's over at the Joseph Bishop. Storehouse all the time. Yes, sir. We have the first of two sisters. This is Navon Williams. Navon Williams. Navon. Going to be a mighty woman of God. We pray, Father, right now for Navon that you touch her life, God. And according to the profession of her faith, we now baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, you may Step baptize her little. now. You're going to do great. You're going to do really good. Woo. See, oh, this come is, on, somebody. She did so good. She did so come good. Come on, good job. somebody. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Now we have the little sister, Rayvon Williams. Ravon, 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 what a cute name, Ravon, hallelujah, my God, you're going to be like a, a raven and soar high, you're going to soar, girl, you're going to soar in the things of God, there's business on this young lady. There is business. There is entrepreneurship in her. And you're going to take it to the limits in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for Rayvon. And we speak the word of the Lord over her, God, that she, everything that is spoken shall come to pass and not one word will fall to the ground. So, Father, we declare that her life is holy before you as we now baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin in Jesus' name. Baptize her now. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
Good job. Good job. Good job. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Clap your hands, y'all. That stand is all, Bishop. That's all. Thank you, Carl. We appreciate you, Elder. Y'all stand to your feet everywhere. Hallelujah. Did this word help anybody today? Hallelujah. I want you to understand that honor is definitely a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. It's not just a simple thing, but it is a very powerful thing. And it is the currency of the kingdom. And as you honor one another, you're going to open gifts all over this house that are going to explode in here in a very powerful way. In Jesus' name. So may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he gift you. May he smile upon you, look you full in your face, and cause you to prosper as you walk in a culture of honor in Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands to the Lord. If you receive it today, I'm going to ask our elders and, and ministers to go as quickly as possible to the room down there. We're going to meet you down there, and we can have our meeting right away. Hallelujah. We got a lot of things going today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try and I try Tried all night long I cried and I cried